What is going on, Patriots Nation? This is Jace and Cole back with the Patriots Drive Podcast. Guys, today we're going to be going over pretty much every expert that's released a mock draft. We're going to be talking what the most popular pick is at pick three, possibly about the trade downs and some of our favorite scenarios. We got guys like Daniel Jeremiah, Mel Kuyper, some of the Patriots writers, Evan Lazar, Alex Barth. Got a ton of different ones um, here that we're going to be talking about, sharing our opinions and thinking what we'd um, like more so make sure you guys like subscribe comment down below which one your favorite one is or what you want the patriots to do and let's jump right into this video thank you to our sponsor underdog fantasy underdog is the easiest place to play fantasy sports with Underdog, you have a chance to 20 times your money in a single night. You just have to choose higher or lower for whatever player stats you want, and you have a chance to win big. Pick anywhere from two to five players by downloading their app or going to underdogfantasy.com. And now with their pick of insurance, you don't even have to hit on all your picks to win the money. So what are you waiting for? Make sure you use code PATCHDRIVE today for your first deposit matched up to $100. Okay, everybody, let's jump right into this. The most common pick, um, and of course, this article is written, it's on the Patriots.com website. It's the mock draft tracker. So they're pretty much tracking all this stuff. So this is where we're getting the information from. The most common pick right here, guys like Mel Kuyper, Phil Yates, Mike Dussel, Alec Barth, uh, Alex Barth, Ryan Wilson, all have the Patriots taking Drake May at pick three. Now that means Jaden Daniels or someone else is going to go pick two. Caleb Williams, obviously pick one. So, Cole, what are your thoughts on if the Patriots land Drake May that's seeming to become the more popular choice around rumors, league circles, stuff like that? What are your thoughts on Drake May to the Patriots at pick three? Yeah, I think that's – I know how you feel about this. I think this is kind of both of our best-case scenario is – I mean, outside of, like, Caleb falling or something like that, but that's just – in the realm of actual possibilities, Drake May falling to three is something that we – I specifically would be a huge fan of. I know there's some problems. I know there's some development that needs to happen. There's some things that need to be worked out, but I just think there's so much potential there that if you can let him sit and we have the situation where we don't have great tackles or receivers right now, we're kind of more than just a quarterback away. So if you can let him sit for half the year, let him sit for a whole year, let Jacoby start and, bring a better situation around him for next season or later in the year. I love that. Let the kid develop. Dan Rolofsky was just talking about some of the problems he has, and he was going over some film of the footwork of Drake May and what caused some of his easy missed throws. And he was just talking about how a good quarterback coach should be able to get that out of his system very quickly. And a lot of the things that he has issues with are extremely correctable. So that's what I love to hear. I think the kid just has so much potential and so much talent. If he can clean up some things with his footwork and mechanics and just be more consistent as a passer, he's got all the talent. He's got all the intangibles that you want. He's got <clears throat> the size, the athleticism, the arm. You just you can't ask for much more. Um, like a lot of people have said, he's he looks like he's built in the quarterback lab. So Drake May is an extremely talented player. I know some other people have their concerns with him. I have my concerns as well, but I just think you're at three. You got to take a big swing on a quarterback and, and try to get your franchise guy here. Yeah. And for me, the concerns, he's 21 years old. He's going to be 22 by August. So he'll be 22 in his rookie year. You sit him for a year behind Jacoby Brissett, maybe even eight to 10 games, like you mentioned. Let him learn with Alex Van Pelt. Let him learn with a veteran there. Make the receiving core, get comfortable with the offense, figure out the offensive line. That's what happened with Josh uh, Al Allen, right? He didn't start for like the first eight games. He came in, he was just fine. Like he's, he, str he had his struggles, but you expect that with a rookie. He has the size like Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. He has the arm strength like Josh Allen and Justin Herbert. Heck, those guys, the, the coming months before the uh, process too, got criticized for their sloppy technique and stuff like that. And what happened? You get them with a good uh, offensive coordinator, quarterback coach, they figure it out. They're top five quarterbacks in the NFL. You can't look past this kid's intangibles, what he has. His um, athleticism is so underrated because of Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, J.J. McCarthy, guys like that, because they are elite athletes. But 
Drake may, he can run just as good as Josh Allen can. I have no doubt about that. And Josh Allen scoring 53 yard touchdowns in playoff games on broken plays. He can extend the play. What I love about him is he throws the ball from number in between the numbers in between the hashes better than anyone else. He can drive the ball. He has so much arm strength, velocity, and he just, I think he's going to hold up better in the NFL with his frame than a guy like Jaden Daniels. If they're taking hits, it's just for me, I thought that we had to get the number two pick for this. And that's why I was a little bit sad that we fell to number three, but through the pre-draft process, it's like, Hey, this is a possibility at three. This is a home run pick. This kid should be a number one pick in most drafts, but he's behind a generational talent and he's behind the Heisman trophy who maybe had one of the best seasons in college football. So this is a slam dunk for me, especially because the Patriots have said they want to sit their quarterback. So there's no one better to sit than this guy. He's already young. It's not like if you sit him, he's going to be 25 like Jaden Daniels would be if you sit him for his rookie year. This kid already is 22. He's shown good success. And he, he could have played anywhere. You know, he had he has family ties to North Carolina. That's why he went there. He he could have he had offers from a Nick Saban at Alabama out of high school. He, he didn't choose North Carolina because that was his best offer. So I, I'm a big Drake May fan. This is my number one option for me. Yeah, I absolutely agree. Like all the things you just said, his, his frame, um, his height, his weight, his body, his build type is just something that should hold up with his style of play. Like that's something you worry about a lot with certain guys who have been mobile in the past. The Cam Newton wore down over time. Um, you have some smaller players who have their own struggles just with height. Like Russell Wilson has kind of faded, um, as a player. And I just, I think he's got so much raw potential that if you just get him into a good system, surround him with a good situation, unlike what they did with Mac. If you do the opposite of what you did with Mac with this kid, you could have you could have a really good quarterback here for the next 10, 15 years. And and like you said, that age, 22 this summer, that's something exciting too. He's still a young kid. He's still a young kid with a lot of a lot of time and a lot of talent to uh see where it takes him. Yeah, very excited for if that would be the case. Okay, now moving on to the other quarterback a lot of Patriots fans fell in love with. And honestly, I mean, he's so exciting. Jaden Daniels, okay, there's guys, Josh Edwards from CBS, Daniel Jeremiah, Rob Rang. There's a couple other writers out there that have the Patriots taking Jaden Daniels right now. Obviously, if Drake May goes to like a lot of people thought he would throughout most of the year, Jaden Daniels is probably going to be the best quarterback available. So what are your thoughts on Jaden Daniels? Exciting, best season in college football and maybe history. It was so exciting what he did with his legs and his arm. And so what are your thoughts on Jaden Daniels at pick three? I still would. I still would take him. I mean, I still would love the pick. I would prefer Drake May just because I think I have less concerns with May. I think uh, I think Drake May's concerns that I have about him are more fixable than Jaden Daniels. Jaden Daniels has a smaller frame which he hasn't shown a lot of uh, ability to protect himself. He's taken some vicious hits in college football. That frame just, we'll see how it holds up over time. It, that's something like I just talked about. A lot of quarterbacks have had their injury issues. Even Lamar, who's great at protecting himself and avoiding uh, some of these big hits, he's had his own injury concerns. So that's my that's my more concern with Jane Daniels' his frame. His hands are a little bit small. He doesn't have as good of an arm as Drake May. And he's somebody who has focused a lot of his attention and success on having two great receivers on the outside and throwing them seam routes, uh, throwing them uh, fades in the end zone and stuff like that. It's just a lot of outside the numbers success. Whereas Drake may a lot of his stuff, a lot of his success he's best at is throwing in the middle of the field, which the NFL field uh, not as wide as college, the college football field. So a lot of stuff is over the middle and that's where that kind of success usually translates. So I'm not saying Jaden Daniels can't do it, but he also had his struggles with, I think it was like 50% of the time he dropped back. He was either, uh, he was either sacked or scrambled and that's a pretty high number. So I like that. I think Jaden Daniels will, will be better off early on in his career just because he has his mobility to get him out of sticky situations. But I think overall long-term, I just think Drake may have so much upside that, He's got it all, and I feel like, like I said, the concerns with him are more fixable than Jane Daniels, but he's still a phenomenal player. I don't want to just list the negatives. He's an incredible athlete. He does have a, a great deep ball. He's one of the, has most uh, one of the most consistent mechanics in this class. He's very consistent with his uh, with his throws, and I, I like a lot of things about Jane Daniels. So I would still be ecstatic if we got him at three. I just I would prefer May just because I have le a little bit less concerns with him. Yeah. And I, you can't scout like I, 
it's unfair for me to say, hey, if Drake May had these two receivers, he'd do exactly what Jane Daniels did. We don't know that. You can't play hypotheticals in the scouting game, but it's very likely to say, hey, if Drake May had guys of this talent, he'd probably have a lot better numbers than he did, and he still had incredible numbers. Jaden Daniels threw for 3,800 yards, 40 touchdowns, four interceptions last year, and he rushed for 1,110 touchdowns. I think the reason I'm hesitant on Jaden Daniels is because me being a West Coast guy, I watched him at Arizona State, and he was good his freshman year, but then he had the COVID year where they only played four games. And then in 2021, before he transferred, he started in all 13 games. He only had 10 touchdowns and 10 interceptions. Like I just, I've seen what he's been. And even last year at LSU, you know, he was, he, he had improved. He was in a better offensive system and you could see that. But before this year, I get skeptical of the guys, the Zach Wilson's, the Kenny Pickett's, the guys that jump into the first round so quickly off of one year. And I just worry about it. Now, I think Jane Daniels will be very good. He's obviously going to be very exciting. This is a crazy stat right here. He accounted for 90 plus plays of 20 plus yards or, or sorry, he accounted for 90 plays of 20 plus yards in 2023. He's going to bring the explosiveness like what he can do with his legs is so exciting. But can he hold up? Can he consistently throw the ball over the middle of the field on time, make his first consistent read? And that's obviously going to be the question with both him and Drake May. But I have a lot more confidence that Drake May can make that translate um, a, a little bit better than Jaden Daniels can. Now, if this is who the Patriots get at pick three, I think me and you are both going to be super excited. Like this is an exciting player. He's going to bring a dynamic to the Patriots offense that we haven't seen or had in years or maybe of all time, right? Because Brady's been here for 20 years and then Bledsoe before that. Like, we're not saying that we wouldn't like Jaden Daniels. I'm just looking long-term and I value what Drake may does a little bit more than Jaden Daniels. So although this would be my second option for the Patriots to do, I'm fine. If you get either Drake may or Jaden Daniels, I think it's a slam dunk home run with both of these guys. Yeah, absolutely. And kind of like you mentioned, I would love to see in a, a, a simulation where you flip Jaden Daniels and Drake may last year and just see what happens, because I think you would, you would be surprised with the results. Um, uh, one thing you got to give Jaden Daniels credit for, though, is he did get better. He just kept getting better sure. and better. Um, was that more because of his weapons or more because of him? <clears throat> That's to be determined. But like, like you said, just would add such an exciting element. We haven't had an exciting offense in a while. This would change immediately with Jaden yeah. Daniels being in there. So I uh, would be a big fan of either of those picks. Let's talk about the unwanted trade down scenario, even though I might be a little bit more of a fan than some players or than some Patriots fans, just because of what it brings for us. Okay, so there's two guys here. Um, Matt Miller, Phil Perry have the Patriots trading pick three to Minnesota for pick 11, 23 and a 2025 20, first. Now, that's a haul, guys. Two first round picks in this year's draft class, plus a 2025 20, first from them is incredible. I would love that. Maybe they can throw in a fourth or a fifth, right? Like the Patriots have said they want a haul for that. So maybe it's even more, even if it's three first round picks, I think it's great. Now let's talk about the trade down scenario at first, because that's what everyone's going to want. Do, is there even any thought of trading down from pick three for the Patriots? Because we, we know at least one of Jaden Daniels or Drake may is going to be on the board. So is there any thought of trading down? I don't, I don't personally see it unless you get a crazy offer, but Minnesota's apparently been trying to not even include pick 23 in the trade up. And it's like, if you're telling me you're going to start with pick 11 in a future first, get they out better here. give Justin Jefferson too. Yeah, get out of here. Like <laughs> yeah. that's, that's absolutely ridiculous. So I'm not even entertaining it unless it's three first round picks and something else. Yeah. Like maybe you can throw in, I don't know, a, a player or another second round pick or a future first, if they get four, four first round picks then okay. Yeah. Now we're talking like that's something you have to consider, but if they feel good about one of these guys, if they have Drake may as their second overall quarterback or Jane Daniels, whatever, and they fall, or even if it's a third quarterback and they're like, this guy is going to be a potential franchise quarterback for the next decade. Plus you got to take him. I, I just, I don't think three first round picks are worth that Four, like I said, you got to consider at least, but, if they don't, if they don't love Drake May, if they say, oh, I just, like Mayo said, his floor is, it is what it is. It's just, he has a lot of things that need to be cleaned up. If they don't feel confident they can fix him, then I don't want you to just say, okay, we'll take somebody else who we'll maybe talk about here shortly or trade back a few picks and take a different guy. It's like, if you don't feel confident that this guy's going to be your franchise quarterback, don't waste the third overall pick if you can get three future first. You know what I mean? So it's really all about 
how they feel about the player. But personally, myself, unless I'm getting offered three, four first round picks, I just I don't even think about it. I just I just take Drake Mayer, Jane Daniels, whoever's there. Yeah, pick 23 has to be included because this class is so stacked. I, I'm going to love guys at pick 11 and pick 23. It's going to kind of suck. We get the third overall pick and then because there's going to be guys everywhere. If there's going to be guys falling. There's going to be runs on certain positions. So it's got to be 11 and 23 and the 2025 first and probably more. Now, let's talk about. So Matt Miller has them taking Olu Fashanu at pick 11, who's a great pro, or great upside offensive tackle, super good athletic skills. And then they have him taking cornerback Cooper DeGene out of mm -hmm. Iowa, who I love as a player, but I would hate to see the Patriots go back at corner in this class. Phil Perry has them taking Troy Fontenau, the offensive lineman out of um, Washington, who has a really good versatility. He's going to be a good tackle if at worst he can bump into guard. He measured well. He has the size and length. He's not like Jordan Morgan. And then they have him taking a very intriguing wide receiver, A.D. Mitchell. Now, I like that haul better. I'm also on the side... I'm a Penix guy. Now, I get it. I get why people might not like him. I would give Penix a chance, but it's not my first option. I, If we're going to trade down for three future firsts and possibly another pick, I want him to load up on talent and maybe push quarterback to next year's class. Now, I'm going to see it in the comments. Next year's quarterback class sucks, guys. If you guys sit here and tell me you had Jaden Daniels as a top five pick before this year, if you even tell me you had him as a first or second round pick, you're probably lying, okay? There's always guys at, that jump up, and I just said I get skeptical of those guys, but Carson Beck, Dylan Gabriel, mm -hmm. Jackson Dart, Quinn Ewers, there's going to be guys, and yeah, they might not be top three picks, but you can get to Super Bowls and you can win Super Bowls with quarterback. Now, obviously, Patrick Mahomes has been dominating the NFL, but Brock Purdy has gotten the Niners to the Super Bowl. Will he ever win a Super Bowl? We'll see. Brock Purdy can get them to a Super Bowl. So if you can stack your team, it's intriguing to me. Now, it's not my first option, but I like the idea of taking like a Troy Font now who's going to be a really good athletic left tackle. You can run a ton of different schemes with him and a very exciting player in A.D. Mitchell. So, I mean, obviously, I think you like the hall of Troy Font now, A.D. Mitchell a little bit better too, right? But it's is it not intriguing to have those two first-round picks? It just sucks because it's either two first-round picks or – you're trading down for pick three. And obviously we want to take someone at pick three. Yeah. I just, I don't see the need for corner with the no. people that you have available there at 23. Um, I just, I like the uh, Phil Perry's mock better just because you're taking a tackle and a wide receiver, the two, two of the biggest positions in need. Yep. I don't mind Michael Penix. I really don't. I just, I have some concerns about his health. It's just when you have four season ending injuries, that's a lot. It's a, it's a lot to take on, and uh, I don't know. I think he's I think he's a good player. I think he seems like a good leader, good dude. I just it's it's tough when you're looking at guys like Drake May and Jaden Daniels, and you're settling for a Michael Penix type. If if Penix didn't pass his physicals like everyone said he did at the combine, I wouldn't be, off be the saying board. that. Yeah, he'd but be off the board. he he passes physical. Like everyone said he looked good, and so for me, I, I I'm not looking at him personally. I gotta trust what those guys are. So. Yeah, I mean, are the ACL injuries a concern? For sure. But everyone that looked at him that's a specialist, from what they've reported, said he looks good. So for me, it's like, hey, talent-wise, production-wise, this guy's a first-round pick. So as long as the, the they checked out, I'm a fan of it. But yeah, and we'll talk about this a little bit later. Maybe there's a way to take it, pick three, and trade up. So we'll talk about that now. Let's talk about probably the least likely option and the one that we don't like. Um, and I really do believe it's a smoke screen cape. Pete Prisco and Chris Tap Tapso um, have the Patriots sticking at pick three and taking Michigan quarterback J.J. McCarthy. Now, Michigan quarterbacks have been good for the Patriots, but I don't think J.J. McCarthy's worthy of a, the third pick. So I think you're going to agree with me on this one, but talk to me kind of about this scenario. I don't want to. I don't want to crap on a guy for something that's not his fault, but. McCarthy at three would feel like I'd be as frustrated as I was about the Cole Strange pick just because it's like, why? There's so many other, there's just, there's better options there in my opinion. I, I know everybody probably thinks I'm going to absolutely hate McCarthy. I don't hate McCarthy. I, I don't buy the smoke of him being top three. I think he's going to go in the top 10. I think that's, I think that's probable whether one of the there's a few teams that are just outside of the top 10 that are definitely going to take him if he's there 
Um, there's like Broncos, um, Raiders, uh, Vikings, those guys. I think there's potential for one of them to trade out for McCarthy. I, if Drake May wasn't here and it was Jane Daniels, Caleb Williams, I'd feel super comfortable trading down. <clears throat> and then if you want to entertain a McCarthy, okay. I just, I, I still think just being in the top 10, taking him, I think it was Evan Lazar who said it, and I couldn't say it any better. We didn't suck this bad and go through all this to end up with J.G. McCarthy at three. Like, that's just not, you know what I mean? It's not, he doesn't have that upside and that talent profile that some of these other guys do. I like McCarthy. He seems like a really good dude. Um, He seems like a great leader. He's a winner. I mean, he's, he's won, I think somebody said like six different titles since high school. He's like 27 and one in college. Yeah, the, I mean, the dude, you can't argue he's a winner. Is it because of him? I don't really know. They didn't use him as, they didn't use his arm a lot, but I do like his athleticism. I love his leadership. He's a guy who's extremely committed to winning. We've heard a lot of stories about that. Um, I just think he's mentally tough. I just think he's he's a good dude. I, I like J.J. McCarthy. I am going to be rooting for him. I, I like him a lot. Um, I don't like him at pick three it's just it's it's too steep when you got guys with the upside of jane daniels and drake may i just i can't do it but i'm not going to crap on the guy i i do i do like him i do think he can have a lot of success if the vikings take him at 11 i think that's perfect for him i think he's got all the all the things he needs to succeed i just he's not a he's not a win because of player he's a win maybe win win player so um at he's three, a perfect at three you're looking for upside He's a perfect Brock Purdy scenario, like I just mentioned, yeah. right? Like, he is going to be a great quarterback if you surround him. Now, that's, it's not a knock to him, but I just, I have not seen him do what Drake May, Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams did to be worthy of a top three pick, how they carry their team, they throw the ball. Now, you see flashes of it, but it's very uncommon, and it's off of rare uh, play action passes that were set up by a great run game. He's not worthy of a top three pick for me. So, I totally agree with you on that. It would be hard for me to swallow um, if that's who they go there. So um, let's wrap this up. There's two more scenarios I want to talk about, and it's a trade-up scenario back into the first round. Okay, Alex Barth does a trade-up scenario where the Patriots trade back up to pick 26 and take A.D. Mitchell, who we obviously already talked about. And then there's another one that Mike Dussault does, so both Patriots riders, where they trade back up to pick 25 and take Tyler Guyton. Now, I'm a little bit more skeptical of this than you. Trust me. I, I would be more excited than anyone if they trade up and can take two of these players. I don't like what I think they're going to have to give up. Uh, probably a second and a fourth round pick to get up here. I do find it interesting that Alex, that to the, the two people that suggested trade up scenarios are Patriots riders and not like NFL insiders. Maybe they have a little bit of a fan perspective or are trying to do it for the fans. I think but, I did see one of the national guys talking about, I think... <clears throat> I think it is a possibility of the Patriots. It wasn't like anything concrete, but he's like, I think it's possible the Patriots look to come back into the, the back end of the first round. So I see what you're saying, though. It, like, there's it, not a lot it, of smoke about it. It's always possible, right? Like, I think we've always wanted to, like, even last year, we're like, oh, trade back up and, you know, get someone. God, I, strange. Think, <laughs> I think there's always a possibility, right? You like, gotta trade up and get Cole Strange, dude. There's always a possibility, and there's always a want, because there's always going to be someone that falls. There's always going to be a guy that's slipping, whether it's Tyler Guy and 80, but someone's going to slip, and I love both these two players. I just, there's 19 roster spots to fill. I've said this in lives. I've said this in other mock drafts, and we only have eight picks, so giving up another one, even though, yeah, you're getting really good talent, this is a deep class for tackle and receiver. You You can find a contributing receiver in the second or third. Same with offensive tackle. I love guys in the fourth or fifth round at tackle. Javon Foster, guys like that. I love Kingsley Sumati. I, I'm fine with Lad McConkey. So I think this is a very deep class. That's why it makes me a little bit harder for me to trade up because I think that staying pat at pick 34 and keeping your fourth round pick is going to put us in a better situation than possibly trading up and getting rid of those two. And you could still find two contributing players right there in this year's class. So that's my take. I know you're a little bit different. So, I mean, what are your thoughts on that trade up? It's obviously exciting, but I think, I think I am more looking, hoping for that as well, just because I'm so worried about ruining the next quarterback we take. I'm so worried about wasting that third pick and not surrounding him well enough like we just did with Mac. And 
I feel like if you can trade up to 23, if you can trade up to 20 to 28, whatever it is, if you can get one of the last, whether you, it's a Brian Thomas Jr., A.D. Mitchell, Tyler Guyton, like you said, if you can get one of those last top guys who could be a wide receiver one, who could be a starting uh, left tackle, that excites me because it's one less piece that you have to worry about, whether it's protecting Drake May's blind side or Jaden Daniels' blind side or adding a true number one possible, possibly number one receiver to the mix. You're just surrounding these guys with more talent. And I think it might be best for uh, Drake May to sit if it is Drake May. I don't know as if it will be the whole year. And if it's not, and he's coming into a situation on a two win team so far, halfway through the year, and you have um, nobody protecting his blind side and Kendrick Bourne and pop Douglas are the only two guys out there at receiver. It's like, you're not really giving the kid a whole lot and I just don't want to ruin him. I really don't. So if you have to give up a fourth round pick who could be a contributing player, maybe to get somebody who you feel good about protecting his blind side, giving him time in the pocket, uh, or if it's Jaden Daniels, especially trading up, getting a tackle, making sure he's protected because that frame, you don't want to beat on him early and have him out. Um, so that's why I like it. That's why I'm, I think more willing than you. I know you like a lot of the guys in the second, third, fourth rounds, just because it, it is a deep wide receiver and tackle class, like you said, but um, I just, I want to do, I'll overpay. I, I, I just want to make sure that the quarterback has something to protect himself or a safety blanket. Just, I don't want to ruin him. And and that's a very fair argument. Like I'm not disregarding it at all. Like it, it getting talent on this team for whoever the future quarterback is because of how sour of a taste is in all Patriots fans mouth, especially both of ours because of what happened with Mac Jones is fair. Like I, I'm not discrediting that. I, I think it's very fair. So um, I, I'm excited to see which one of these comes true. Um, and of course we appreciate you guys a little bit longer video. Appreciate you guys sticking around. Hopefully you guys already hit the like button. Make sure you subscribe and we're going to be doing a live stream for the uh, actual NFL draft. And we're planning on one more uh, live mock draft. So make sure you guys have that notification bell turned on so that you can uh, get notified when we go live. And hopefully you guys come hang out with us on draft night. So appreciate everything. And until next time, talk to you guys later.